In our first story, a family at uh, Klo Agogo, a village in the Yulo Krobo municipality of the eastern region, is calling for justice after their 16-year-old JHS3 student was defiled by a 46-year-old family friend. The suspect, who is currently on the run, is said to have assaulted the victim and rendered her unconscious before having sex with her. Eastern Region correspondent Kofi Sian, who visited the family at Kloagogo, reports that the victim, who is now four months pregnant, is being stigmatized by the public and her colleagues at the Kloagogo Presbyterian Basic School. We'll bring you details of that story later. More than 400 traders at Abufo Markets in the Ofenso municipality of the Ashanti region went on a street march Wednesday to protest moves by the municipal assembly to relocate them. Businesses came to a standstill as the traders vowed to resist attempt to move them to a new market they describe as uncompleted. Here's a, a report filed by Nana Asenso Mensa. <laughs> Some of the traders told Joy News facilities at the site are inadequate and inappropriate for occupation. They accuse MC of unlawfully seeking to eject them from their present location. <laughs> When you take a good look at the market, you will see that it is not fenced. The environment is filled with filth and poor drainage system, which is not conducive for our health. We are pleading on the government to come to the aid of the people so we can continue with business. Assembly officials, however, explain the relocation is to end buying and selling along the road which exposes people to danger. Spokesperson Joe Dufour said the new market is being constructed in phases, describing as unattainable suggestions by the traders is unfit for business. I, we have employed more than necessary watchmen to take care of their goods. And talking of the fencing, you know, this is a, a project that is being funded by outsiders, uh, donors, and the government itself. And, you know, we have phases. This is the first phase. The fencing happens to be in the second phase. And, you know, we, it's not, we're not saying once they move inside, it's going to be off. We are going to make sure the market gets to the level that they want. But but it is a sequential process. It is a process that we need to follow. They need to move inside so that should in case we make any proposal to the government or to any of the donors, they will see that, of course, the facility that we applied for, that they send money for us to build, it is being in use. Once the facility is in use, we can at least send a proposal talking about the fencing, talking about any other things that they've, they've asked for. Yeah. So for the fencing, it is something that is in our plan and it is in the pipeline. That will be that will be done very soon. Yeah. But we need to move them inside. They need to go inside to start the training before we can do that proposal because it is in the second phase. Nanasa Sumensa, reporting for Joy News. <laughs> The Wa District Court has remanded into prison custody for a week seven activists of the New Patriotic Party in the Sisala West constituency of the Upper West region over an attack on the Sisala West District Assembly at Bulu last week. The seven who faced charges of conspiracy to riot and rioting with weapons were part of a marooning crowd who besieged the offices, chased out the district chief executive of the area, Mohamed Bako, and locked his office. Here's our Apple West correspondent, Rafik Salam, reporting from WA. The seven suspects were given criminal summons on Tuesday to appear at the War District Magistrate Court. They are the Cesar West Constituency Chairman of the MPP, Bukar Dramani, Cesar West Constituency Treasurer, Mahmoud Foka, Cesar West Nasara Coordinator, Walika Idrisu, and polling session chairman Ali Dumumuni. The rest are government appointees to the Sasala West District Assembly, Amadou Suleimani Zato, mental health nurse Suleimani Mohammed, and Gwemi Lukman, who is a midwife. They were charged on two counts conspiracy to riot and rioting with weapons. 
Chief Inspector Daniel Yawiabua told the court that on October 26, 2017, the seven accused persons organized themselves with 100 other persons and besieged the Sister Local District Assembly at Bolum. The alleged relatives met the absence of the district chief executive, Mohamed Bako, and then locked up his office. They further threatened to deal with him if he comes to the office. He took the intervention of the police to drive them away. Chief Inspector Daniel Yebo noted that they have intelligence to the effect that there are pockets of relatives who are still threatening to cause mayhem. He pleaded with the court to remand the suspects in prison custody to enable the prosecution to make further investigation on the case and arrest the other alleged suspects who are at large. Lawyer for the seven accused persons, Obedi bin Sadiq, disagreed with the prosecutor. He stated that the fact presented by the prosecutor was empty, adding there is no element who suggests that the accused persons possess weapons or any instrument which has the semblance of a weapon at the time of their visit to the assembly. He noted that the accused persons for now are presumed to be innocent and if they are remanded and eventually found not to be guilty of the offense charged against them, they are not going to be compensated in any way and yet they will have suffered irreparable damage. He prayed on the court to grant the accused persons bail. His worship, Sidney Brimer, in his ruling stated that the fact that the accused persons went to the Sisala West District Assembly to look for the DCE and followed up with a threat to deal with him if he comes around is enough evidence who supports the facts of the prosecution. He remanded the seven suspects to prison custody and asked them to reappear on November 8. The seven suspects were handcuffed and whisked away in a Toyota Land Cruiser pickup under heavy police presence. Reporting for Dwayne News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Well, Parliament's Public Accounts Committee is urging ministries, departments and agencies to retrieve all monies paid employees who did not work for those monies. This follows revelations that more than 500 million CDs was lost as a result of tax, payroll and procurement lapses. The committee on Wednesday engaged officials from the Health Ministry and the Attorney General's departments. The Health Ministry lost some 25 million CDs, with payroll irregularities amounting to more than 600,000 CDs. Speaking to Joy News, Public Accounts Committee Chair James Kluche Avaji said that relevant state agencies with such challenges must go after those who fail to do their work, leading to loss of revenue. This is that we are considering. Uh, what is on end salary? Uh, somebody is paid for salary for work not done, and that is what I mean by on end salary. Um, so um, we are worried, but fortunately, fortunately, the new system that has been developed by the previous government, um, which they started in 2015, uh, which is the the e salary um, system, where. Uh, before salary is paid to the workers at any department, the head of the department must uh, verify and confirm and authenticate that yes, this number of people that you want to pay are actually uh, working in my department and for that matter, the controller and account manager can go ahead and pay. Previously, we don't have that system. So people are paid even when they are on retirement, their salary keep coming or if they resign from the office, their salary keep coming. But the new system that has been developed will solve the problem and we hope that uh, from 2016 audit report, we should not have uh, issues about our end salary. So it's an issue that, that is very important to us. Because if you look at uh, Ministry of Health alone, the amount involved is huge and, and cover a number of people and they receive this salary knowing very well that they have not uh, worked for it and they receive it. And in fact, it is something that uh, we should take serious look at. People who knowingly uh, receive this salary for work not done, we should punish them severely and so that it will deter people from continuing to behave that way. 
So I think the issues that have come up is something that uh, the, the state agencies, the relevant state agencies, must go after these individuals and more importantly, retrieve the money for the state. Yeah, we will definitely we will even report in our um, in our report, they recommend a report for these agencies to go after these individuals and collect the money from them. I mean, even those those that are not available. In fact, they, even the families should uh, bear. The, the cost of those and refund the money to state because the man, government cannot lose money like that. And we need money for development. We need money to do other things. So why should we pay somebody who hasn't worked for it? So we will recommend for the agencies to go after these okay, people. Yes, no, all the agencies, no, if I'm not only Minister of Health, almost all the agencies that we have, um, we have, we have interviewed or who appear before okay, this but, committee. But, 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 That's it for the AM News. We've got a lot more news to look at when we find, you know, we won't find time. We have time on the show. We'll look at the newspapers. We'll touch base with the online portals as well. One of the trending issues in our country today, at least for the greater part of this morning, is the resignation letter by our High Commissioner to South Africa. It's actually occupying a lot of the front pages this morning. You'd see when we touch base with the newspapers. Uh, I've got two questions to ask you. If you've spotted that letter of apology by AEC Boateng, who is Ghana's High Commissioner to South Africa, two things. Does that letter sound sincere? Is that enough? Should he just not resign? Send me a WhatsApp message. Send me... A regular text message. So that's the letter on your screen right now. Retraction of partisan comments and submission of unqualified apology to the Ghanaian populace. I have, upon sober reflection, decided to retract the comments I made during my interaction with some members of the New Patriotic Party in the Ashanti region over the weekend. I realized that my statement is unfortunate and at variance with the letter and spirit of the Ghanaian constitution and the dignified office of high commissioner that I occupy. I am aware that as the representative of Ghana to South Africa, I have a responsibility to protect the interests of all Ghanaians within my jurisdiction to grant them equal access to opportunities that are presented, irrespective of their political affiliation. I regret the effect of my speech delivered to the young party members, which has generated public outcry. I therefore wish to retract my comments and render an unqualified apology to the presidency and all Ghanaians signed by George A. C. Boateng, Wednesday, 1 uh, November 2017. As for the signature, we'll find time and talk about that later. But listen, considering the comments, his justification later on, on our sister station in Shire FM in Kumasi. The many talks, this happened over the weekend, today is Wednesday, at least yesterday was Tuesday. If he truly, truly regretted, would this letter of apology not come like say Monday, quickly after he said what he said? Is this an apology that we wholeheartedly accept? Do we even trust that he means these words that he's shared? It's not about me. Let me hear from you. Stay with us. You're watching The AM Show. We'll come back with a lot more of this apology letter plus your comments. Keep watching. <laughs> 